Jerry Seinfeld gave the commencement speech at Duke University over the weekend, and upon taking the stage, a few dozen students walked out of the ceremony as a form of protest against Seinfeld's pro-Israel stance in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Jerry is also serving as our commencement speaker today. As they walked out, they chanted Free Palestine, while all the supporters of Seinfeld countered with Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. They posted to social media calling Seinfeld a pro-genocide Zionist and said they would have their own graduation ceremony at a different spot on campus. It ended up being like 20 students chanting. It was not the powerful message and the powerful performance they thought it was. Now, I probably would have walked out on that speech too. Not because of politics, nothing to do with Israel or Gaza and everything to do with the fact that every time Jerry Seinfeld opens his mouth, he's talking about the same thing. How the landscape of comedy has changed and no one can succeed in entertainment anymore because the world has lost its sense of humor. I think it is also wonderful that you care so much about not hurting other people's feelings. In the million and one ways we all do that, every second of every day. It's lovely to want to fix those things, but, all caps, but, what I need to tell you as a comedian, do not lose your sense of humor. Wow, man, powerful stuff, dude. Mind-blowing words. I liked it better when Van Wilder said it in one sentence back in 1998. Don't take life too seriously, you'll never get out of line. And listen, I get it. These graduation speeches are supposed to be timeless words of wisdom that can apply to this generation and every generation thereafter. And that's exactly what that speech was. Gotta have a sense of humor because life is fucked up and it's gonna kick your ass and all you can do is laugh about it. Sound advice from Jerry Seinfeld. And I also understand that there is probably still a contingency of people who are trying to stop comedy and don't view life that way and they're whiny crybabies, idealistic bullshit where they want to fix every single problem in life rather than just rolling with the punches. I understand that that exists somewhere in this world, but my God, when it's the only thing you talk about, enough, Jerry. Uh, you go on the New Yorker podcast talking about woke backlash from PC culture or whatever fucking phrase you made up from 2018. And it's like, we don't want to talk about it anymore. It used to be you would go home at the end of the day. Most people would go, oh, Cheers is on. Oh, MASH is on. Oh, Mary Tyler Moore is on. All in the family's on. You just expect it. There'll be some funny stuff we can watch on TV tonight. Well, guess what? Where is it? He then posed a question saying, could we do this episode about Rick Shaw's on Seinfeld today? I don't think so. To which Rob McElhaney brilliantly responded with a picture of Rickety Cricket from Always Sunny saying, probably. I don't know if it's because he's just 70 years old and he's way too late to the party or if his little bubble in Hollywood is still stuck in like 2018 when people were too sensitive. But look around, man. Comedy's doing just fine. Shane Gillis is on top of the world, and he says and does whatever he wants. We just had the roast of Tom Brady. It's the biggest thing in America in entertainment last week, and it was the most horrific jokes you could ever say about a man. Tony Hinchcliffe has risen to stardom after flaming the entire dais and being known as an edgy guy in comedy. Look at the guys from Always Sunny. They've been doing it for 17 years. Never had a problem with cancel culture because they don't fucking harp upon it. But I get it. I understand Jerry is coming from uh, the world of sitcoms. He's coming from the world of Seinfeld in the 90s. There's no way that a show today talking about the, the bitter, negative side of life would ever make it in today's entertainment landscape. And by the way, I think we now know who's the Brady and who's the Belichick in the world of Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David. Because one went on to have an entire second career while the other one's making movies about Pop-Tarts. Ever since he didn't hug Kesha, man, ever since then, that was the beginning of the end. We just didn't realize it. The time. Kesha, I love you so much. Oh, thanks. Can I give you a hug? No, thanks. Please? No, thanks. A little one. Yeah, no, thanks. Oh. <laughs> because everyone was like, oh my God, that's so funny. Jerry Seinfeld is this quirky old man with OCD. He didn't want to give her a hug. And it's like, no, man, you were just being a blatant asshole to this girl who wanted and desperately needed a hug. And ever since then, he's just been a total prick every time he opens his mouth or any time he speaks on anything. And now listen, I know that Jerry Seinfeld had one kid who graduated Duke and another kid who's currently enrolled, so I understand why he gets to do the commencement speech. I'm just saying if it was me, 
Jerry Seinfeld would not be my first pick to bring on campus around a bunch of teenage girls. Okay. See? We can make that joke, Jerry. We can sit in the uncomfortable, awkward feeling of humor. Right? No, no cancel culture, no woke hive mind is gonna come get me, right, Jer? What's the deal with these commencement speeches, Jer?